right, and welcome back to Weekly Daily Wednesday, so we can sit back, relax, take a midweek break, and just talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, all that fun stuff. How's everyone doing, beautiful people? I am Vince Stone, that is Jill Bryant, and one Pedro Mateus, and with our powers combined, uh, we're just going to talk about some cool things. Uh, oh, yes. we got a big show for you this week, a lot of stuff to try to pack in. Yeah. So we're going to have to jump right into it, but real quick, what's up? Uh, Jill, I see you're, uh, yeah. you You don't look like a webcam, like on, you don't look like a Logitech <laughs> Quick Cam VC on parallel port going over down oh, this week. No, see, I have a new webcam. Thank you very much, Vin. And this one is much clearer. Mm -hmm. And this was his original working Logitech C920 Pro, unlike the lemon that I had been using. I have no uh, idea. The one how I had before was a it, lemon. Like, record even when it was on, off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that one works. made me definitely pixely before. <laughs> C920 Pros, uh, they're cheap. Recommend them. They work with Linux. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of C920 Pros, yeah. Pedro, how are you doing? Hello. Yes, I've had Yay. this C920 for a long, long time, but uh, that's not news. What's not news, I guess, is uh, Motorola Moto X4. It's really nice. It's actually a really nice phone to have. Mm -hmm. There, I bought a cover for it and a screen nice. protector and everything. So, yeah, it's actually going from a 720p quad-core phone to a 1080p 8-core phone. It's like, ooh. Look at all the games I can play on this now. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. I, I, that should really help your productivity. Um. Well, that's the thing. At, at work, that phone usually stays in the backpack. I just have my work phone. That has games on it, too. Mm. But Not anymore. <laughs> that was, that was moving <laughs> so, one thing I've been playing around with is... Um, fat, what is it? What is it called? Uh, the fighting game we're doing this week. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Fantasy Strike. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is that <laughs> the right name? Yes, it is. Yes. I've been practicing that the past couple of days. Because Jordan, one Jordan Swing, you might know him. You might have heard of him. It's like, yeah, let's do a tournament. I was like, all right, I'll put some time into this. I'm going to learn how to do it. Because, you know, I'm going to stick up for all the old people trying to play fighting games <laughs> online. with their, I, I'm, Old Man Vin is going to represent you. And Jordan, Jordan's like, yeah, we're going to. I just happened to notice him. Do you know what I noticed, Pedro? Mm. He hasn't played it yet. <laughs> <laughs> See, when they released it, I started. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, this is a thing. All right, cool. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not showing up to a tournament without at least knowing where the buttons are. You know. <laughs> uh, so I'm looking forward to that thing. Whenever it goes down, maybe it's tomorrow night. We could do it Friday. Just bring it anyway. Good news, everyone. Mm -hmm. Virtual. Yes, good news. Yeah, because this is uh, virtual amazing. reality, I guess, is now uh, come to Linux, the Linux desktop. That is because you could already totally use the Vive and all the other ones if you got a little clever with it for games. But this one, it, it comes from Collabora, and it. Yep, it is a VR desktop. You can have your floating windows, you can adjust their position, you can basically do whatever one on Windows is already tired of doing from those, uh, even the Valve one. They have like a little lounge thing that you can set up however you like in VR. And this one, well, that's just for um, good old <sighs> Linuxy desktops. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's a Glib uh, Vulcan interpreter. But uh, yeah, it, this could actually be very interesting, especially for someone like me, who up to this mm -hmm. point, honestly, VR, it didn't really tickle my fancy. But seeing this in action and seeing them go through all of that and adjust the windows and play around with things, it's like, okay. <laughs> That is something I could very well get into. So, yes. Okay. All right. I'm down. <laughs> I took a look yeah. at it, man. I'm kind of <laughs> happy with it. You know, VR support is most definitely like, ah, oh, that's neat. And I, I don't want to wear something on my head. You kind of get my attention with this, though, because, um, you know, we got to make the minority report reference because everyone's going to do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. But if I could have something, you know, Equivalent to like if we get like an eight, maybe dual 16K, 8K in each eyes. Um, so I could have 10 virtual monitors. 
Mm. Yeah. Then I get happy. You know, I, I don't need the touch control. I don't need to spin things around. It's like if I could have this set up here without the monitors, I'd be happy with that. That would be a very mm. different video stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it would, but it'd still be kind of hilarious. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's like ping microphone arm. Oh, that's where it is. No, okay. Nah, nah, man, I, I don't have to do all this moving. I, I'm just going to lay on the floor. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Aww. It's going to be the next thing. Uh, yeah. It's pretty interesting. I, I really want to, you know, I really want to be able to, to use VR, but uh, uh, seeing out of one eye, uh, it, it makes that kind of impossible, at least for now. <laughs> but I really love that they're they're working on this and uh, you know brought it to the Linux desktop. That's that's wonderful, and it's you know thank you to uh, Valve who is sponsoring this, mm -hmm. and uh, of course it's going to work well on their HTC Vive and Valve Index. That would be of course and. Uh, yeah, so this is really cool. And the XR desktop uh, uses open VR overlays to display desktop windows over VR applications, as well as uh, what Pedro mentioned, Vulkan, for a full mm -hmm. 3D desktop experience. What a wonderful implementation of Vulkan. Really cool. It is the future, and it's good to see work like that. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get it. You know, we're seeing the work done for GNOME and KDE. Uh, hopefully, XFC will get it 30 to 45 minutes before the eventual heat death of the GNOME. <laughs> KDE, let's, let's stick with this theme of desktops. Yes. So, mm -hmm. uh, KDE, uh, the, well, we talked about, um, can't remember his name, but his site is, uh, pointieststick.com which is gen it's just genius uh and he's talking about um usability and productivity it's the usual kde roundup that they do every single week and with this one there are some new features for kde plasma 517 mm -hmm. which is new because the current version is 516.5 or something that is currently at and it's there's actually a lot of really nice quality of life stuff for KDE 517. Uh, and there are a couple of fixes uh, for um, KDE 516. Uh, one of them was the, if you went into the fonts uh, configuration screen, the font anti aliasing would just change because, eh, for some reason. Uh, and the, um, the other one is one that I very much noticed was an issue with KDE 516, because if you hit Alt F2 and you get the little launcher and you start typing something and then you see it highlighting the thing you want to open and you hit enter, just before you hit enter, it changes to whatever else it thinks you might be typing. So it's like... I've opened <laughs> the wrong so, thing no. so many times. Yeah, uh, I, man, predictive anything like that. That I got to nope that. That never. Yeah, the, mm. the, there wasn't an option to nope that, and there still isn't. But now it's like, oh, if you have something selected, it no longer moves around. It's like, thank you. Was that so hard to nice. do in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and <laughs> as you saw in the video, uh, widget, widget positioning code has been completely rewritten. Re 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 <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> which will <laughs> which will help in remembering widget location on the desktop, and the widget resize handles and icons now increase in size when interacting with them on a touch screen, which is really awesome. And the image slideshow wallpapers used to be random, but now you can set the sort order. That's something that I've used in KDE a lot, so I appreciate that feature. And Why wasn't the nice that there from the start? <laughs> I know it's it's something basic, but again, these are the all the 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 big uh, new features in KDE five point seventeen, including the night color feature has a new manual mode and can be turned on and off at will. Something else that I've always wanted. Why wasn't on that KDE. there from the start? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Children with your Tinker Toy Dust. It's like, seriously, th this is just a perfect example. It's like, I was reading through that list. It's like, that should have been there from day one. That should have been there from day one. That should have been there from day one. What are you doing? Be grateful for once in your life. Never. <laughs> hey, maybe we can all start using Jade. 
Yes, Jade, or just another desktop environment, is a Linux desktop shell made with web technologies, and it's a mix of WebKit. Doesn't that sound horrifying? <laughs> no, GTK, <laughs> yes, HTML, yes, CSS, it does. <laughs> JavaScript, and Python. I know it's kind of Electron Wrap, the the desktop, but anyways, <laughs> it's still really cool. And we talked about this innovative desktop. It, at desktop April of last year, and I was curious about his progress and ran the live USB of Manjaro WebDAD, which features the Jade shell to test it out. And, you know, it's a very unique, elegant, and very responsive and visually appealing and simple at the same time. It's, it's, it's really unique. It has a dock at the bottom with the terminal launcher in the center, has a dashboard with shortcuts in the center of the desktop with search, web, browser, files, and an area to take notes, settings, etc. The application bar at the top is very unique. Is It's in the form of an artistically red streaked curve. So those of us who are artists really appreciate this and, and good design. And you can zoom in and out on the desktop just like you would a web page, of course. And, uh, and I actually really enjoyed it has uh, um, voice notifications when you perform a search and launch apps in the background. So that's really cool. It also has notifications if you connect your phone into it um, with KDE Connect. So that's really cool as well. And I just, I love trying out new desktop environments. And I'm going to actually install this uh, on one of my computers to live and play with it for a while. It was really unique, fun experience. I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> one of the things I noticed, uh, the developer himself, mm -hmm. he's like, yo, you know, I'm pitching this as a, air quotes, functioning prototype. Mm -hmm. And the reason mm -hmm. I'm doing this is just to sharpen my Python skills. So yes. the, the reason I point that mm -hmm. out is don't walk into this expecting a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it's still mm -hmm. an alpha too. It's still a work in progress. I, I mean, when, mm -hmm. you, when you're building a desktop with this technology, this is, is a testament to the arrogance <laughs> of man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no one ever uh, thinks uh, to stop and ask themselves, should we? Our because we know Aww. we can. Our clearly. developers were so preoccupied with whether or not they could. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it is a really nice proof of concept. And if he's doing it to learn Python, great. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I wouldn't use that. Mm. No. <laughs> so one of the things that uh, <laughs> happened earlier this week was uh, Manjaro had a bit of an mm -hmm. update for the testing update, you know, launching some new stuff. They got some new hotness with the XFC 414 Pre. They got uh, updated kernels, bunch of fun things. And uh, oh, and the flat snap pack image wrap thing. That support containerization <laughs> support for all of those. Pre-activated, mm -hmm. out of the box. Um and I'm really happy that they bumped XFCE 4 to 414 pre 3. But you, you get through all of that and everything's fine right up until the point the internet read. Um, we're going to start shipping free office by mm -hmm. default uh, because they've partnered with SoftMaker. Enjoy the best compatibility to MS Office. Mm -hmm. To which the internet responded. <laughs> yes. Get out the pitchforks. Well. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. It's dead. This project's sold out. It's now the Pepsi of distributions. <laughs> no. I don't know really no. what I want to say about that. Uh, first off, mm -hmm. you got to pay the bills. I, yes. I, mm -hmm. You know, I really understand this, you know, when our Amazon check comes in every month. Not, mm -hmm. Let me say, when the Amazon check goes out every month. Like, <laughs> thank you for helping us with that. But I don't know if this is the best decision because, you know, the first thing I will say about free office is you have the base version. Then you have the enhanced, uh, air, uh, not even air quotes, what I would like to call the usable functioning version. But mm -hmm. the base version doesn't even save to uh, open office format. You you have to pay extra yeah. for that. Now, <laughs> in the defense of that, they're not removing LibreOffice. You can just no. install that. Yeah. But most importantly to me, I'm going to ask either of you, do you mm -hmm. use LibreOffice or an Office suite on your desktop? Yes. I have LibreOffice, yeah. Do yeah. you use it? 
Yes, uh, I do. Th- I used it the other day to create the uh, little graphs mm-hmm. that I posted on Discord <laughs> with the 3700X benches. <laughs> Benchmarks. Okay, you spreadsheet. Jill? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, recently I used it. Um... <laughs> Actually, I have uh, I do a lot of writing in it when I need to write a, a long article um or a tutorial that, that's what i've used it for like for scale for instance mm. yeah <laughs> i use google docs like a normal person because i want google to have all my information <laughs> hi Googs, how's it to call me um <laughs> well normally i i just uploaded my open office uh um um libre office doc to uh, google docs mm-hmm. so that, that's how i do that <laughs> so hey i, I... <laughs> I don't know if it's time to abandon. Who's the target audience for um, uh, Manjaro? Those people. <laughs> Those people, people who don't want to actually go through the process and install Arch. Yeah. They just want to say mm-hmm. that they're running Arch. But that's the whole problem. Anybody who wants to roll out with like old school, like regular Arch, th- we call them Gentoo users. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm and this is the point where if you have any feedback for today's show, send it to van at linuxgamecast.com. Oh, bring it. Bring and, it. And you can run the run the J desktop we just talked about on Manjaro. Yep. <laughs> so that's the thing. I thought we'd give it a mention. Uh, for good or for bad, let us know what you think about that. Uh, into life. Mm-hmm. For something we've talked about on this show a couple of times, little Oop snitch, snitch, evil socket, <laughs> yeah. he writes back, hey man, he's saying peace among worlds in his avatar, you gotta give him credit for that, he's a lovable guy. And he's like, I'm not working on it anymore, I'm not responding to issues because I lost interest and nobody pays me for this, this project is so essential, question mark, the Linux quote unquote community can fork it and send a pee <laughs> on. Nice play on words. <laughs> Hey man, stick a fork in it. And this was the little snitch. I mean, what uh, what was it? There's a mm-hmm. Mac equivalent. Uh, is yeah, it a snitch or a little snitch mm-hmm. or open. The, yeah, little snitch. I think it is. Little snitch. Yeah, it's that it's that annoyatron <laughs> that'll tell you anytime something you know wants to hook into a socket and it's like, yo, I'm trying to get somewhere. This is something I would immediately disable if somebody mm-hmm. if I had to deal with it. But it could be useful for people. However, mm-hmm. um, you know. Maybe consider putting that in the readme instead mm-hmm. of just a comment on the GitHub. But yeah, uh, what do I want to say about this? I mean, this, this has happened before. This is not the first project. This is a, apparently a lot more used than I thought it was. Like I would. Well, mm-hmm. there's a lot more vocal advocates for it. Certainly, See, that's what I. Yeah. That's what I was trying to suss out. You know, it's like mm-hmm. there's, there's people like, oh my god, it's dead. I can't believe he had the audacity to lose interest in a project, no longer support it. It's like I can. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, hey, look look at the benefits of the project being open source is because you know, hey, you, you can stick a fork in it. Mm-hmm. Come do your own mm-hmm. thing. I mean, update it. And, you know, we've seen issues like SSH, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> There's like, a one. <laughs> one dude is like, yeah, this isn't Raptor bus proof. Not by a long shot. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> it's like, please, someone take over or, you know, come and help me. I want to share this responsibility mm. with someone. Please. And, <laughs> but, all right. That's the thing. R.I.P. Little Buddy. I never used thee, but you got some thoughts on it, Pedro. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's uh, the original comment. It's like, yeah, that is the um, telltale signs of someone who burned the F off with that particular project. <laughs> uh, it's uh, clearly this project got on his um, nerves so much that he decided, you know what? Just I'm out. Do Peace. you think it was the Peace pro- Among Worlds? <laughs> Do you think it was the project or... If the project was done. He was like, all right, it's good. Honestly, uh, the way he phrased it in the original mm. readme, which is still there, he still hasn't updated, so if you go to the original Git, you can still read the whole thing. Uh, it's like, this is a work in progress, this is not secure, this is not, you know, yet done in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so, clearly, he had more that he wanted to put in, but he b- got burned out at some point. I don't know why, chances are we'll never know why mm. but 
the way he ended the thread before he locked it as off topic and only available to be posted in by collaborators basically it's like don't tell me what to do with my stuff and i'm pretty sure saying that and then immediately locking it afterwards that is going to rub some people the wrong way mm, yeah. you may have burned a few bridges there no, not just <laughs> yeah. no you, you can try to pretend that does that is a that is like a guaranteed developer response i've had i've encountered that uh, yeah it's like people <laughs> friends of mine that's like hey Help me with this. So you need to change that. Don't tell me what to do with my... I was like, you would peace out. <laughs> Done. It's like, yeah. all right, then we're just going to go somewhere I'm else. I'm just saying that I, I wouldn't throw anybody under the bus for that response because he's 100% right. It's like everyone yeah. is like, this is mine. I made this. So I'm not getting anything from this. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. All right. GitHub. <laughs> GitHub. So oh uh, for a while... It looked like Microsoft buying GitHub wasn't actually doing anything. It was just good news coming out of it. But not anymore. Uh, apparently, GitHub, uh, thanks to the current blockade that's happening with the um, U.S. trade relations with other countries, uh, a lot of developers are finding themselves unable to create private repos or um, remove um, public repos they basically are getting themselves locked out of their own projects on GitHub. And there's the first big gotcha of being bought by Microsoft. Though, to be fair, this isn't Microsoft's fault. This is the fault of the United States government. You, you keep but, on, yeah, uh, I was about to say, man. You're yeah. like, well, this has something to do, this had nothing to do with Microsoft. <laughs> this would have happened whether or not Microsoft bought it. But that's the thing. Yeah. Once you get... Uh, once you get yourselves bought by a big American company, well, once you get you're bought, subject. When you're bought by a company that happens to obey the laws of the country. Yes. You live in. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then you, you know, you have to play by the big boy rules. And well, this is uh, what's happening to GitHub. And a few developers uh, have been stung by this. And they are currently, like I mentioned, either unable to access their private repos or unable to create new ones mm -hmm. or unable to do anything with their public repos. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, even if he had gone to moved everything over to GitLab, he'd run into the same issues. And this is, was interesting. You know, I was wondering if the sanctions have been lifted or something changed on um, Anatoly Kashkin's GitHub account because of all the press, question mark? The links to his website on GitHub are working for me here, but maybe he just can't access them on his end, question mm -hmm. mark? That's odd. Um, yeah, because I was ac fully accessing everything yesterday when I was doing uh, the story for the show. It's interesting. <laughs> it could um, very well be that uh, it, it was got limited. It fixed. Since uh, yeah. his Russian, uh, he is Russian, so it yes. may very well be that it's just a limitation. It's like, oh, you're accessing this from a Russian IP. No, you don't get to see it. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's yeah, but it it would make sense for them to to take it down for everyone. It just it's it's a little strange. <laughs> <laughs> silly, silly things that we. I mean, I, I'm not making light of it at all. But yeah, I just really wish yeah, it's we not, lived in a fantasy nice. world where this ex didn't delete have exploit of what I normally yeah. say on a Saturday just didn't exist and people didn't have to deal with this nonsense. Yeah. But it does make a good case for like a federated um, code hosting, which yeah. I'm sure these solutions are out there and available, which I know they are. I just can't name any off the top of my head. Because I've yeah. seen in every post, like people rattling off, use this and this and this and this, which oh, everything. Bitbucket. Bitbucket. That's another one. Yeah. Good rock mm -hmm. and roll with that. All right. Uh, good news, though. Mozilla is up to a thing of webs. <laughs> yes, they mm -hmm. are. So yes. uh, their previous uh, operating system didn't go so well, Firefox OS RIP. But uh, they are coming back into the fold with a... Well, it's a router OS, uh, mm -hmm. and basically uh, they're calling it, um, what are they calling it? Web things. That's what they're calling it. <laughs> it's right there, and mm -hmm. I completely missed it. Uh, and it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's basically OpenWRT uh, compiled, in this case, specifically for the Tourist Omnia, 
Uh, you can also, mm-hmm. there's also a build for the Raspberry Pi 4, but nice. it is, yeah, it's open WRT, officially endorsed by Mozilla, officially, you know, curated by them to do the things that they want uh, to do. Basically how they envision the interwebs access on um, your home network should be. And that's a very good thing. Because yeah. with Mozilla rubbing people the wrong way left and right by, you know, how about we just encrypt those DNS requests so we can stop people, you know, gathering the metadata from just your top level URLs? Yeah, let's mm-hmm. let's just do that. So, yeah, definitely Mozilla is doing a very good thing and just custom router firmware. That's insane, and it's awesome. Yeah. It's it's yeah, it's definitely <laughs> awesome. And WebThings Gateway is a web-based user interface to monitor and control smart home devices from your router or other gateway device, such as Raspberry Pi. And the new version has the ability to use push notifications and triggers from your Internet of Things devices to alert you about everything from motion detection, from cameras to detecting uh, smoke and CO2 emissions uh, from your fire alarm. So this is, you know, very progressive. This is kind of the first first time we've we've really seen this uh, from uh, Mozilla going to other hardware and, um, you know, managing Internet of Things with other hardware. Yep. It's really cool. I think it's pretty mm-hmm. neat. And it runs on a Pi 4. So, yeah. Uh, interesting. Hey, Mozilla, make, <laughs> make one with, um, like, four 10-gig SFP. Um, ports edit yeah <laughs> please that'd be great i'd love that um yes womp womp yay the floppies they yes. did <laughs> yes so linux developer dennis Ef- efremov can't maintain the floppy driver in the linux kernel anymore because he said it's difficult to find working floppy hardware on which to test the software so linus recently marked the floppy driver in linux as orphaned well all he has to do is come to my house and see all my vintage computers behind me <laughs> he could he could take one of them and use them for for development and yeah this is sad it's the end of an era era and i still treasure my floppy disks of which i have several hundred of uh, but the good thing is I can still install a new version of Debian Linux on one of my early 90s computers behind me that has a SCSI floppy drive, and it will still work because SCSI will be supported for many, many years. <laughs> uh, awesome. If you take into consideration that the uh, SATA drivers in the Linux kernel are based off exactly. of the SCSI drivers, yeah, it's not going anywhere. But yes. <laughs> what is also not going anywhere is the external USB uh, floppy drives. Yeah, yes. those are mm-hmm. still supported because that's just a USB controller that takes care of that. Uh, and everything else is on the firmware of the drive itself. So, yeah, if you have to slash want to play with floppies, you can still use that. Yes. <laughs> play with the floppies, because if you Yay! have anything legitimately yeah. backed up, like, that you need on floppy magnetic media, you're a moron. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 and I pray, well, you should pray to whatever deity you saying, worship will, that it still yeah. works. You can put what yes. I just said on the table, like in the park. I'll be that meme. Change my mind on that. Um, <laughs> however, yeah. at the end of the day, you don't have to worry about anything. I mean, this is only going to affect motherboards that still have the FTD connector in it. So yeah, you, you have to do some archiving to dig that out. And even then... The kernel is full of unmaintained uh, drivers, mm-hmm. so it's yeah. still gonna work. I don't have a problem yeah. on that. I'm, I'm not. Mm-hmm. I I looked around. I have uh, an Ultra Tin that has a floppy drive because it's built into the case. That's the only one I have. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's not a big deal. And it is, yeah, it yeah. is orphaned now, and um, I guess unless there's a significant enough ABI change, it won't really make a difference because it's the floppy disk hook. Seriously, yeah. what's going to change? <laughs> well, I don't think there's yeah. any companies currently. I mean, if you had to buy magnetic media, you'd have to buy new old stock and buy the last yeah. run of floppy drives. Those things were made as cheap as possible, and you might get a week or two out of them before they fail. New. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and yeah, like you said, USB drives, they're always, I'm not going to say they're always going to be around, but yeah. No one panic. Yeah. Blender. Yeah. 2.8. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So after four long years, Blender 2.8 is now available. And two weeks ago, we talked about the Blender 2.8 release candidate, and now the official release of Blender 2.8 is upon us. So go download it, everyone. It's it's awesome. And of course, it comes with everything we've been talking about, a new user interface, um, an EV renderer, just, you know, a gang of uh, changes under the hood. And, you know, this... As Foxy says, after four years, it better be good. And yeah, since I've been playing with it um, yesterday, it's it's awesome and very stable. And I was playing with the beta, and the beta was just fine as well. So it, this was also timed perfectly with the start of the Seagraph 2019 oh, I can make my own an annual. Hipsters. Neat. Oh yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a second. <laughs> That yes, one on yes, the left yes. looks familiar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does kind of look like Pedro. <laughs> no, no. If you give me a bottle of hair dye, we can make something happen. <laughs> Let's just say but, I kind of looked like that about 10 years yeah. ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It, what was awesome, it was also timed perfectly with the start of the Seagraph 2019 Annual Visual Effects and Animation Convention, which started Monday. So that that was perfect, and they're having a lot of events there at the convention, including with the um, um, the uh, new uh, Academy Software Foundation. They have a, a special open source track, and Blender is involved in that as well. So really awesome. <laughs> Good on you, lot. Uh, Yay! Put a lot of work into that. Uh, one suggestion I will make: mm -hmm. just include the BMW thing. Package. Yeah, just yeah, package yes. that in, please. Because yeah. <laughs> let, let's not kid ourselves. Ninety-five percent of the use cases to download a new version of Blender and run that and post your time yeah. somewhere. Well, and it is in the demo. <laughs> it, it is in the rendering demo that you can download. Well, that's what I'm saying. Pack it in. Yeah, it, it's a separate. Oh, yeah, it, it needs to yeah. be the same right. package. It, and yeah. I know somebody <laughs> screams like, "We made our own. You can just download the benchmark." To it. It's like, yeah. no, that's not no, because we have like you wanna, decades yeah. of that BMW yeah. car being. <laughs> the BMW thing has been the thing mm -hmm. for the past yeah, several for years. years across multiple websites. So you can't want that to be a thing. But hey, it turns out, um, Pedro, that I might be able to render it slightly faster than you. Yes, yes. definitely faster mm. than my 1080, that's for sure. Because uh, one of the improvements <laughs> that the new uh, Blender Cycles renderer comes with is the ability to... Uh, I don't think it's in there yet, but they are going to introduce oh, it's a patch. It in the yeah, I, I looked at that yes. and I was like, yeah, <laughs> we're going to wait on that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and basically, what it lets you do is it lets you use those RTX cores on your uh, 2060, 2070, Case 2080, 2080 Ti. Point, all right. I'm just saying, Blender, you even know BMW 27, first thing on there. Yeah. yeah, precisely. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, and as you can see from that graph, it's one of the things that they mentioned. They say that the uh, OptiX, which is what they're calling the new uh, RTX renderer, um, they say that it significantly cuts down the rendering times, especially when compared to the Xeons. But then again, who's looking at the Xeons? I have a laptop with a Xeon right there. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it is it it is significantly faster and might as well put those RTX cores to use for something because apparently no games will make use of that until, what are yeah. they saying in the news, 2023? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Know, hang on, let me pause <laughs> quick too. What were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one game. <laughs> that actually makes use of it. <laughs> Factually incorrect. The best kind. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the 14-inch Pinebook Pro is out, and you can pick one up if you want it. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, the highly anticipated 14-inch Pinebook Pro Linux laptop we have been talking about is now available to purchase for just $199.99. This, this <laughs> screenshot, Jill, this screenshot would make uh, Matthew command on punch a monitor look out look at look, look at the dpi on that and how small that taskbar is oh yes 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 <laughs> how can you well, read that well, i can i wouldn't even use that oh. um. <laughs> well matthew has a pine pine book uh to play with himself already so <laughs> but uh pine 64 is making 
no profit from selling the Pine Big Pro, but is it is being offered as a community service to the Pine 64, Linux, and BSDs communities. So if you don't mind seeing a few dead pixels or two, go ahead and order one. But but if that bothers you, please don't order one. <laughs> they explicitly talk about that <laughs> yeah. on the page. I, uh, I did see the uh, bit about the dead pixels, but as someone who... Uh, makes it a hobby of his to restore old laptops and make sure that everything is working. Yeah, that pixels that's par for the course. Um yeah. the mm-hmm. yeah, I I want one. I really do want one. <laughs> I'm looking at the specs and I'm like yeah, that 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 would be a very interesting <laughs> toy. However, 200 pounds for a toy is a bit more than I'm willing to spend right now. <laughs> So for yeah. that two hundred dollars, mm. though, I mean, you're looking at a dual core ARM, one point eight gigahertz, that's Cortex A twenty seven, uh, what a quad core, multi eight sixty for GPU, four gigajoules RAM, sixty four gigajoules EMMC, USB three, headphone jack, keyboard, touchpad, and front camera, fourteen inch IPS LCD at ten eighty p. But, 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 not once, <laughs> but twice. <laughs> <laughs> in, in in bright red, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. they make a little mention of dead pixels. All I'm saying is, if you're buying this, expect it to come with some dead pixels. Now, mm-hmm. industry wide, I'm saying if you're going to buy a monitor or something like that, or a laptop from HP, Dell, somebody like that, it's usually between three and five. Yep. So, yeah. what I would like to see mm-hmm. is what their acceptable uh, dead pixel policy is Mm. because it's usually like even on the high ends between five and eight it depends on where they're clustered yeah Mm -hmm. because it depends on where they are in the screen this is what i'm Mm -hmm. getting to is three dead pixels wouldn't bug you at all unless they were all grouped together in the dead center of the screen Mm -hmm. so anyway they they like actively warn you like if that's going to be a problem don't order to which um it it looks like a fun little tinker toy i am down with yeah yeah I'm excited and most about of the it. B panels you can buy secondhand <laughs> off eBay. That's well, usually that's what, what I'm I get. saying is you're spending two hundred dollars uh, for this. I mean, you, you yeah, you're not going to be like, <laughs> ah, let's go, oh, take it back. Fourteen inch, ten eighty p ARM laptop for two hundred pounds. Right. That's a pretty good price. Just think about for, it. You're not going to get a high quality fourteen inch ten eighty p panel for two hundred dollars. No, no. <laughs> you're getting IPS. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, technically. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, check this out. I made a thing. You did a thing. I always do yeah, things you every did. now and then. Uh, you guys are acting surprised. Uh, last week <laughs> I talked about OBS NDI, a way to get video from one computer to the other computer without the use of uh, capture cards, no HDMI setup or anything like that. You can just use the regular old fashioned gigabit networking, no fancy hardware, just router in between them. And it really does what it says on the tin. You can send audio and video, multiple streams, and it's kind of brilliant. So I showed you how to do it. If you were curious um, how to get everything set up, the two things you need to download, how to install it, and uh, Debian, how to install it, and Fedora, there's a little trick you got to do there. And there's a little bit of a guide. And it, in all fairness, it's a quick and dirty how-to. It's one of mine and that continuing series. Kind of assuming you already know what an OBS is, because I try to make it no matter the topic or the information <laughs> in under five minutes. So it's in out. There's a little bit of a comparison of a uh, Talos principal benchmark running with HDMI and NDI. So you can kind of get a side to side. I dig it. It's pretty interesting technology. It's been around for a while. And like I said, last week, it, it has been really like spidey and crashy up until its last release last year, the end of last year. And I just hadn't played with it until recently. And it's like, all right, you're back. It could be handy if you need to get a lot of inputs into one box or over a long distance, too. That might mm-hmm. also be another thing. Um, or if you like to play the video games and you wanted to set up a dedicated streaming rig, there you go, right there. You just yeah. need that rig, an ether noodle, router. Um, yeah, use a router. Be smart. And, you know, mm-hmm. we're back to using our little $60 
Uh, we were using the tech last week and we used the tech on Saturday because I needed a proof of concept for him to make a video and say, hey, this works. It works. It's been tested in production here. Uh, I, I'm still saving up for that quad 4K black magic <laughs> moon device. It's going to solve yes. a lot of problems. Yes, you but are. <laughs> this comes in at the low, low price of free. So uh, I suggest giving it a look if that's something you've been interested in playing with. It's mm -hmm. free it's awesome. if you have a separate machine. Mm -hmm. Who are you talking to, Pedro? <laughs> yeah, chances are anyone listening to this show has like a laptop with a decent <laughs> enough processor computers. that they could just <laughs> use. Yeah, but uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, if you had your laptop, you could like, put your OBS on. And this is something we want to point out. This would run on an Optiplex 3010 with a dual core, mm -hmm. <laughs> like i3. Mm -hmm. And it'll do yeah. 720 60. Can't really do 1080 P60, but it'll do 720 60. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which isn't bad at all. So that's kind of beautiful. Um, before we get into the slice of pie, Pedro, <laughs> do we get anybody to think this week? How about we just thank everyone? That's all I can We could absolutely can thank everyone yeah. because. Every single one of you out there who have been contributing on uh, I don't Patreon. Know. What, what about Gary? What about Gary? <laughs> you know, Gary has had his issues, and you Full know. Full disclaimer: that... I'm. We're talking about a hundred and sixty <laughs> patrons, and I'm almost positive there's no Gary. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually remember yeah. a Gary in there, but it's like a hundred and sixteen yeah. of you for two hundred and seventy-eight dollars a week. You lot are crazy, and awesome. we absolutely love you, you fund this for it. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> um, thanks for that. Uh, it gives us a budget. We're able to look at it. We're like, okay, we got this much money. We can get away with this much stuff this week, and it's been a fun project. Mm -hmm. We've been going to this for like six years. Always looking to do more as a patron. You get access to our Discord. We're actually in there, and that's where we talk most of the time. Because you don't say a lot on social yes. media because we're in there. Uh, we also have IRC completely open to anyone during the live shows. That's brilliant. An extra show we do, um, a production meeting we hold on Saturday. You get a customer RSS feed, pop that in. You can listen to that if that's your jam. But mm -hmm. we got LibraPay. We got T-shirts. Uh, I don't know, man. They wouldn't let me do the flamethrower. I asked. Really nice, no. too. <laughs> yeah. But we do have a, there's a, here's a store, recommend things to people. What we've done with that is everything that we know that like, we have here. The computers, uh, the hardware, the audio stuff, the video stuff, that is categorized and listed. So you're like, hey, what's that thing? I want that thing, or I want something related to that thing. You can go there, get it. You can buy it off Newegg. You don't have to buy it off Amazon. We're not worried about that. It's there for your information. So um, mm -hmm. hopefully you make some use of that. That's cool. Keep being awesome. Stick around for your name in the credits. And um, thanks again. Mm -hmm. I right. guess you do oh. have to thank Foxy for something. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Of course. So thank you, M. Fox Dog or Michael Fox, uh, one of our uh, wonderful executive producers here at LGC, our wonderful patron. And he gifted me Elite Dangerous to play on our game streams. Ah. Thank you so much. And he paid full price for it. It wasn't on sale at the time. <laughs> You hear that? Thank Arthur you so and much. Pedro just threw you under the bus this week. He's like, what? <laughs> Thank you, Foxy. I love you. <laughs> All right, kids. Mm. Pie. The slice. Pie of pie. pie. Overclocking a pie, man. This comes from Tom's yeah. Hardware. All this business in our show notes. Come put in your face organs. Benchmarked uh, Raspberry Pi 4. It's two gigajoules. With the new firmware, to a lot of people, it's like, I thought I had yeah. an overheating problem with the mm -hmm. last time. I was like, yeah, I did too. And apparently still kind of does. Yeah. <laughs> so, Pedro, would you, oh, Tom's hardware, die in a fire with your auto-playing video. No one asked for that. That has nothing to do with anything. But they <laughs> yes. bring up the point, man. It's kind of like the Silicon Lottery, right, Jill? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, um, you know, uh, the Raspberry Pi before could be overclocked to 1.75 gigahertz. And now with this new form firmware, it allows you go to, to go to 2 gigahertz. But that's depending on the quality of the silicon in your Raspberry Pi 4. Um, that's always been an issue. In fact, they deal with it in, in NASA as well. Um, they have to know where, you know, where uh, their 
production for and where they get all their metals and whatnot to use on the on the space station and whatnot. So so people aren't in danger. But anyway, so as far as the Raspberry Pi goes, you know, it depends on what uh, what uh, facility the uh, metal comes from is is how well it will perform. And I, you know, in this article, they talked about um, how, you know, in some people's work work cases, they can they can get um, two gigahertz, but for others, you won't. And but there was over a thirty percent increase in in uh, output, which was really really awesome. And you know, I I was saying in the in the show notes, make sure to buy the cute twenty dollar ice tower CPU cooling fan we talked about a few weeks ago for your Pi Four before overclocking and even attempting this. Yeah, I don't know. How does this going to get? You might want to implement. Like- Barbecue cooling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the heat coming off the barbecue will be cooler than whatever the <laughs> SOC is running at. No, you weirdo. Yeah. You, you just pour the barbecue sauce <laughs> on. It'll smell like barbecue eliteness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 running at just the base uh, 1.5 gigahertz was already hitting 80 Celsius, mm-hmm. do you really want some matter of cooling solution? Be it yeah. the uh, ice uh, little tower cooler that we talked about, like Jill mentioned, or literally anything else, it needs something because it's it's not going to be pretty. I don't know. Let's see if I can like mm-hmm. weld an adapter plate. Uh, like <laughs> yeah. Four TV was. <laughs> I mean, it's aluminium. <laughs> I'm have... pretty sure the contact block of the NH14 is bigger. But that's what I'm saying. I could, I could like weld it. I, I can make this work. I mean, it might need some <laughs> structural support to keep from snapping the pie in half. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be. <a> thing. <laughs> Might have to desolder the GPIO pins. <laughs> nah, because it won't fit on there. <laughs> uh, I got a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> we can pull those out. <laughs> All right, that's gonna do that business. Uh, if you got some ideas, thoughts, hints, allegations, you want to send them our way. Uh, you can hit a, hit that contact button. Don't we have one of those? Yep. Yes, we, we do, do have a contact button. <laughs> it's right there on the nav bar on LinuxGameCast.com. And the form that you need to fill out is very easy. Just make sure you select LWDW from the little show box that you get, even before you uh, the um, form itself. Once you're there, we just need your name, your email address, a subject, and of course... So security the, number, um, photocopy of your ID. We won't ask for that. And uh, if for some reason you're seeing that, you need to check your browser. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we just want to know your feedback, the things that we got right, the things that we got wrong, the things that you feel like we really didn't touch on just the right spot. So let us know. What if I just want to write a lyric <laughs> about a weasel? Can I say something? Well, you can do that too. Yes, you can. <laughs> There's another category for that just thing. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, fair point. Um, I do try to remember to do this. Now, this is different than actually getting around to do it, but once a week, I usually remember to check because we have a very, very grumpy and powerful spam golem that mm-hmm. keeps track of this. So if you put a bunch of links or links it doesn't understand, it's better not to put URLs. We're smart enough to Google, mm-hmm. you know, leave <laughs> leave that hint in there. We can find it. It'll be like, no, bad. That's a spam. So keep that in mind. <laughs> I might not see it or just hit me on um, like at me in IRC or at me in Discord. Uh, if you're going to send mm-hmm. me personally, I'm just throwing this out there because this happened again this week. If you're going <laughs> to DM me on Twitter and I don't follow you, at reply me in public and be like, yo, moron, I just sent you a DM. So I'll know to go check that for you. <laughs> yeah, Ben doesn't like that. <laughs> I don't mind it, but... <laughs> There's a difference between minding it and not seeing it. Uh, <laughs> the, Trust me, it's like a thousand plus follower type of thing you wouldn't understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. getting close. Frizo. <laughs> yeah, so Frizo sent us a bit of feedback about episode 179. And uh, we were talking about the uh, alternatives to, uh, what was it called? I can't remember. Uh, 
send something. But he says, number one, files. Many, well, all of the alternatives. Uh, teleport. Okay, uh, yeah, tele- yeah. Teleport, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, outside of that Vaseline clearness you just threw down, it was uh, something that you could put on your desktop and just do send mm-hmm. files back and forth between computers. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. One file at a time specifically, which was one yeah. of the points of contention we brought up. And yes. uh, he says... Uh, number one, files. Many, all, question mark, of the alternatives mentioned for direct file transfers, SSH, SSHFS, SFTP, SCP, was our sync mentioned, uh, relies on having SSH access to the remote PC. This works great if you're the owner of both machines and they're both regulars on the network. But if uh, if not, say it's your room slash, fla- uh, slash housemate, uh, or you're having friends over, or you're at a LAN party, or a log beatup, it may not be pratic- practical or secure to create a login shells for whomever uh, you want to receive files from slash send files to. I think this is what teleport aims to be for. Very good point. Mm-hmm. Number two, yes. links. Uh, if you use Firefox and you have Firefox sync set up, you can both right-click links and send to another Firefox instance. Uh, and you can also do the same uh, with open tabs by right-clicking on the tab. It is glorious, and I use it frequently to send links between laptop, desktop, and phone. So that is very nice. I actually didn't know that was a thing. But yes, it does work. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna say and this, I've man. used that feature a lot, Frezzo. That's awesome. The <laughs> Firefox links yeah. are awesome. <laughs> Everyone's playing around in your SSH, R-Sync, and all that. And it's like, oh, we get this configured. No, that, I just, I'm going to hand you my thumb drive. I'm like, here, just, here. Put, put <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's your file. When it comes to like some <laughs> links, I, I'm down with that because the fortunately, if you've had a YouTube or Google account or Google Plus account, like say what, about four, four and a half years ago, Pedro, when you're like, everybody gets an account for all your accounts and your accounts get mm-hmm. accounts. So you got a gang of those. I have like just two dedicated accounts that I use for hangouts.google.com and I message those two accounts to send hyperlinks back and forth. And that works with everyone because like, here, let me just send it to you on Messenger. I don't trust me. You do just go to hangouts.google.com. I mean, you got an account. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the point that he, uh, that Fresno brought up on the thing about teleport was something that I yeah. hadn't even considered. Yeah. If you have someone over and you just have that one file that mm-hmm. you want to send, it's like, Okay, can't find the uh, the uh, the flash drive. Teleport. Do you have that installed? Yeah. Boom. Done. <laughs> and it's yeah, it's nice. Everyone can. It's easy to use. It uses notifications, so it's yep. really easy for the average person to use. So, it's awesome. What if they have an iPhone? It works with that too. <laughs> <laughs> does it work with that? I don't. Think yeah. It does. Yeah. It, it's it's. It's. I have to read the article again, but I was pretty sure it said mobile as well. Yeah, yeah I, it probably I, I means Android. Mobile, I said <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I thought I, I was pretty sure Apple was mentioned in there. I, <laughs> to go back and it, look, it could be, man. I, I don't expect things to work on Apple. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, beautiful people, we got to get out of here. It's been a long show. Thanks for sticking around. Joe is alive. We'll see you again next week. But until then, let's hit some music up. And let's hit the right music up. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> That's the There phrase. we go. That's their beats. <laughs> Drop the credits. Awesome. Yep, it works with Android, iOS, macOS, and Windows. I was correct. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had was remembering that. <laughs> so, yay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show up with A, my Windows phone, and my other one running Selfish OS. Where's we have like, a yeah. Windows phone at work. I will totally bring that in and try to teleport something into it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, all the lovely producers. Yes. Seriously, thank you. Even if you can't afford to hit one of the higher tiers on Patreon, even just do it the, anyway. Uh, I dare you. <laughs> even just like the one dollar <laughs> tier all of you that's what makes the bulk of it so thank you thank you all <laughs> you're awesome we love you our patrons and our listeners wonderful uh, thank you <laughs> i'm physically ill <laughs>